Immediately to my left is the Battery Carriage House Inn. It is said to be the most haunted hotel in downtown Charleston, and there's reportedly several ghosts. Charleston, South Carolina was built as a port city and was founded in 1670 and was originally named Charlestown after King Charles II. Charleston has seen a lot throughout the years, from pirates to the first shots of the Civil War that was fired from Charleston that started the American Civil War. Charleston is said to be one of the most haunted cities in America. And one of the most haunted places in this historic port city is said to be the Battery Carriage House Inn. Battery Carriage House Inn is a beautiful, historic mansion that is located on 20 South Battery Street, located at the southern part of the peninsula at Battery Park, also known as White Point Gardens today. Battery Park was originally established as a fort to protect Charleston. The location that is now the Battery was converted into a park in 1837, but was turned into a Battery during the American Civil War. In the past, a collection of cannons in action was referred to as a Battery, either during a siege of a fortress or a city or in a temporary field position during a battle. These cannons howitzers and mortar batteries might have been mixed together. This is why today there are so many memorials and monuments, even cannons, all throughout Battery Park. The Battery Carriage House was built and purchased by Samuel Stevens in 1843. Most of everything you see today is almost original to 1843. In order to take full advantage of coastal breezes, during the scorching summers. The mansion was constructed with its length facing the sea rather than the road. In addition to using covered porches that spanned the length of the home, large windows in the mansion would be open to let winds from the waterfront help with ventilation. For over 16 years, the Stevens family used the mansion as a vacation house. John Blacklock later purchased the mansion until they were compelled to depart during the American Civil War. The Blacklock family resided in the home. Before the Confederates lost control of Charleston to the Union Army, the homes that lined up along the battery were directly in the path of several of the Union Army's cannons that were fired into the center of the city. The house was damaged during the attack much like a large portion of Charleston was. Following the war, Blacklock might not have had the resources to fix the house. The conflict had a severe impact on most Southerners. After the war, many Yankees saw an opportunity in the South and moved there to take advantage of the Reconstruction. Colonel Lathers purchased the home from the Blacklocks in 1870. Colonel Lathers served as a colonel in the Union military and was wed to a prosperous New Yorker. So they therefore had ample funds to repair the mansion. Landers completed the repairs and upgrades to the home by hiring a well-known Charleston architect. The addition of a ballroom intended to serve as a conference space allowing Landers to convince politicians and business people from the North and the South in an effort to boost South Carolina's economy. Nonetheless, Charlestonians disapproved of Landers' presence since he was bringing into the area Yankees to aid in the state's reconstruction. Landers departed Charleston and sold the home to Andrew Simmons in 1874 primarily as a result of carpetbaggers flooding the market and exploring the financial hardships of the South. The first National Bank of South Carolina was started by Simmons. 
For more than 45 years, Andrew and Daisy Simmons resided in Battery Park. They were content with their lives and were well known for throwing extravagant parties. In the 1920s, a couple by the name of Pringle bought the property and turned it into a low-cost lodging facility they dubbed as Pringle Court. Yet by the 1940s, Charleston had transformed into a military community populated primarily by Navy personnel. Along the waterfront, bars and nightclubs sprang up in plenty. As a result, the Pringle Inn offered hourly and nightly room rentals. Charleston was a site where prostitution, drinking, and gambling were very common in the 1940s. Not the sincere and lovely location you see today. The property was converted into student accommodations for the College of Charleston. A little over 20 years later, and in the 1980s, it was given the name Battery Carriage House. It is therefore really no surprise that the inn hasn't amassed a few ghost stories throughout the years. Many of the ghost stories from the Battery Carriage House come from what used to be the carriage house right behind the main mansion. The ghost in room 10 seems to be nice, well dressed, and enjoys being among women. His story is one of an unsuccessful romance. He agreed to his parents' wish that he would first travel and study at Yale University even though he was planning to marry his hometown girlfriend. The young woman eloped with a man who stayed at home a week after her fiancé left for college and was married to him. The young man's parents decided to wait until he arrived home before telling him of the awful news. Perhaps in New Haven, Connecticut, their son would meet a young woman who was more suited to their social status and his level of education. The Yale student was overjoyed to finally get to see his sweetheart when he visited Charleston on vacation. His parents had to tell him the sad news that she was married to another man while he was away. The young man was so upset he had never imagined seeing another girl when he was in school. So he ascended the stairs to the top of the roof and fell from the window into the lawn below. The story is a tragic one. However, there are reports of seeing his ghostly spirit in room 10. Those fortunate enough to see him say he is a gray apparition, a handsome young man of medium height with a slight build and a receding hairline. He is said to be non-threatening. However, most of his appearances seem to be motivated by his desire to jump into bed with women staying in room 10. The gentleman ghost seems to have a great affection for the ladies. Perhaps he is trying to make up for what he missed for dying so young. On occasions, he will embrace a female visitor. Other times, he simply sprawls out next to a sleeping visitor. Several visitors have attempted to record their stay, but unusual things have happened, such as blurry photographs and broken equipment. On one instance, twin sisters were staying in room 10 while one was sleeping and the other was awake. A well-dressed young man appeared through the wall and sat down next to the sister on the bed, which was visible to the sister that was still awake. When she attempted to awaken her sister to show her the apparition, he rose up, made a polite bow, and exited the room in the same direction as he did when he entered. According to some tales, whenever a woman shows signs of anxiety, when he is laying down next to her, he promptly leaves, of course, through a wall. The ghost may occasionally be uncertain as to whether the female in the room is already taken. A couple who reserved room 10 to celebrate their wedding anniversary when her husband was downstairs chatting to the concierge about how to spend the following day, the wife was sprawled out on the bed watching TV. 
The woman's attention was drawn away from her TV show by a shadow moving by the window, and then by a strange smell that smelled like Old Spice, but was most definitely not her husband's. In a panic, she rushed to open the door. The moment her husband started up the stairs to their room, the shadow vanished instantly. Nothing else transpired as the couple carried out their plans to stay the night. While many visitors never see the ghost, occasionally they smell cologne, hear odd noises, or encounter strange things in their sleeping quarters, including lights turning on and off by themselves, or the room suddenly becoming very cold. Then there's another claim that a couple encounters something so terrifying that they decided to leave during the middle of the night from room 10. Most travelers who stay in what used to be the carriage house in room 8 typically report comfort and charm. But some folks report a much more terrifying experience. In room 8, there is a spirit that is called the headless torso ghost. The spirit is said to be a growling, big threatening man spirit that seems to visit during the middle of the night. The torso ghost is a scary sight given that he has no head. He doesn't reveal himself very often, but when he does he gives the guests a real fright. But it's definitely one thing to see a ghost, but quite another to be able to touch one. A married couple went to sleep without knowing of the haunting stories of room 8 and not even giving it a second thought. Man awoke feeling a sensation that he was being watched. He might would have dismissed this as a dream, but what he saw was a torso of a person from the waist to the neck. He could see that it was a big man. It looked as if it was a strong barrel chested man, and it looked like he was just hovering next to the bed. The guest decided to try to reach out towards the apparition's torso. The man could feel his arm go right through it, and it felt as if it was stuck there, almost like the ghost didn't want him to let go. During the course of him wiggling to get free again, he felt a coarse wool fabric, and his arm was very cold, as if he had stuck it into a freezer. This is when the torso spirit made a growling sound and then disappeared. The man felt like the spirit of the torso ghost was an angry spirit and was mad about something, possibly for him losing his life a little too early. But how did the spirit come to be, or who was he? Before it was turned into a public park in 1837, the area known as White Point Gardens was where the city's outlaws and pirates executions took place for a considerable amount of time. Additionally, a large number of criminals, including 49 pirates who died at White Point, are believed to still be around. One of the pirates executed at White Point Gardens was Steed Bonnet. After being found guilty at trial, Bonnet and roughly 30 members of his crew were executed at White Point Gardens, and their corpses were dumped into the marshes, which is today the site of numerous historic Charleston homes. The nickname Gentleman Pirate was given to Bonnet because of his rich upbringing and peculiar actions, such as hiring his own crew and paying them a weekly salary, and also building his own ship. Along with the infamous Blackbeard, the two made their way to Charleston, where they seized power after plundering ships in the harbor and local shops. Bonnet and the other pirates that were captured and that were executed at White Point Gardens, it is said that their ghosts still roam the park and the neighborhood today. Screams that reverberate through the night and apparitions that float have been reported in White Point Gardens. There is also a myth that claims that if you are near Water Street and look down, you can still see Steed Bonnet's spirit looking back up at you from the water. White Point Gardens was also previously a Confederate munitions magazine during the American Civil War. In order to escape General Sherman's great march to the sea, the citizens of Charleston fled the town in February 1865. 
They put a lot of effort into preventing the weapons from falling into the hands of the Union. The soldiers in charge of disarming the explosives at 20 South Battery, five homes away, spent each night in the carriage house behind the abandoned estate. It is unclear who the true ghost is in Room 8. Though nine Confederate soldiers temporarily stayed at the structure that was later to become the inn, and according to legend, one of the men was killed by the explosion that the soldiers were attempting to destroy before falling into Union hands. Yet considering the spirit's wool attire, some have speculated that the apparition may actually be a captured pirate who was hanged at the battery. The blinds and roommate have reportedly started closing on their own and becoming stuck, making it impossible to open them again. The ghostly man, whoever he is or was, is not pleasant. Everyone who saw the strange events in roommate agreed that they felt threatened by the visiting spirit, even though he didn't pose a threat to them. The mysterious actions that confuse in visitors staying in room three. At night, some guests have reported a giant blob of light that will occasionally move from one room to another, and some people will occasionally see things like energy masses of different sizes, almost like orbs. There's also claims that switched off cell phones occasionally make sounds and flash. Early in the morning, one couple, a man and wife, Notice the internal shutters of room 3's door moving. Even though air conditioners today keep the room cool, these shutters were originally used for the only means of ventilation in the past. This activity appeared to be primarily rhythmic in the moving of the shutters. No further action was taken after the guests turned on the bathroom light. The husband and the wife were not aware that the inn was haunted prior to their visit to room three. Given that so many people who have been to the carriage house inn throughout the years, including Civil War troops and pirates, it's not unreasonable to believe that some of their ghosts may still be around. But whether or not the carriage house inn is indeed haunted, we leave that up to you to decide.